Are you working on your author career, but struggling to get that first book published? Does the goal of being an author seem too lofty? Or are thoughts of having multiple books and making a full-time living are as fantastical as living in Cinderella's castle? Welcome to Discovered Wordsmiths, a podcast where aspiring authors can be heard. Join Steven Schneider as he finds and talks to authors you may not know, but authors that have gotten their foot on the author career path. Hear what they've done to get there and where they want to go now. Settle back. It's time for a bit of inspiration and advice. Come listen to today's Discovered Wordsmith. All right. So, Kevin, welcome uh, to Discovered Wordsmith podcast again. And I see you this time. This is great. I love the (laughs) technological improvements COVID has bestowed upon us. Uh, So how, how are you doing today? I'm good actually today. It's uh, it's kind of a weird day, a day after a holiday. So um, yeah. it feels like a Monday, but it's not. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. I feel like I've got a million things I got to get, get done and get caught up with, you know? Yes. So I know when we talked uh, clear back uh, a year ish ago um, about your book, you had said you got into writing because you had heart attack. How's that going? How's your health been? Oh, my health has actually been really good. I've, um, um, I, I was doing some work last year that was extremely stressful, and that wasn't so good for my, my health and my heart, and I could feel it. And um, so I stopped doing that work and um, really just focused more on the writing. And I did uh, have a, I had a checkup in June. And uh, it was the best since the heart attack. So it was good. good. Everything is actually going in the right direction. We'll we'll attribute some of that to writing. That writing helped (laughs) save you. We'll say that's what did it. We can pass that along. It's official. Yes. I'm glad uh, because my father had his first open heart when I was still in high school. Mm. So my personal health is always an issue uh, that I've got to keep in the forefront. And you know, I would hate to have all these great story ideas and not be able to write them. <laughs> so, yep, same thing here. Um, I look at the uh, list of stories and things that I, I feel are still, you know, you have a lot of ideas and they don't all work out, but uh, I still have a list of things that I think are going to work out. And um, yeah, I want to be around to tell those stories. Right. Agreed. So, Speaking of, uh, your, your, the book we talked about last time, The End of the World, um, you've written more since then. Tell us about how your writing has been going, what you've got out there now. Yeah, I, um, I had started writing um, under a pen name for a while. I'm still doing that. But a lot of the writing I did earlier this year um, has been under a pen name that um, I'm not ready to announce to the world yet as to, as to what all that is. But it is um, in epic fantasy, and I did release a serial under that name on uh, Kindle Vela. So okay. a lot of my time went really quickly towards uh, developing that because you know Amazon made that announcement uh, that it was coming to existing authors, uh, trying to drum up you know stories and stuff for it. So. I dove into that, said, I'll give it a shot. Uh, we'll, we'll try it. We'll see. Um, that's still an open question as to whether it's worth doing. But um, I did that and I did it under the pen name. So a lot of writing time went to that. And under my own name, I continue to write a lot of short stories. And I've been okay. working on um, trying to send them off to professional markets and and all of that, but also just writing them for my own collections. And I was working on a, a longer collection and it, um, something that I think might be out next year. Um, I, I had these stories though, that didn't fit. (laughs) They didn't fit that particular collection. Many of them had been out in the markets and, um, you know, I've had some editorial you know, feedback and everything on them. And I, I just felt like these stories all kind of fit together in that, or most of them fit together in that they were, um, they sounded a little bit like fairy tales. They, they're not based on any real fairy tales, but they they have that sensibility about them. And then the other thing that I noticed, and I think we talked a little bit about this last time, is that one of the things I've learned about what I write is that I write 
uh, what I call speculative fantasy. So it's speculative like speculative fiction, and it's based on a real big what if question, you know, what if this happened? But rather than using science or engineering and technology to, to tell the story, I put it in a, you know, a fantasy setting. It's, it's magic or it's a uh, secondary world. It's, it's something like that. And um, so these stories that I put together in a collection that's now out it are just the first ones where I kind of realized that's what was happening. That's what I was writing. And they all kind of felt like they had this fairy tale kind of feel to them. So I thought they okay. went together as kind of a nice short collection to tide people over until I actually get something written. <laughs> uh, I am still working on the first book in my arcane depository series uh, that I had hoped would be out this year, but based on the publishing, the distribution delays that I'm seeing um, probably won't be out till next year at this point. Uh, okay. So what's the uh, short story collection called? So the collection is called the enduring mage and other tales. Um, okay. And the Enduring Mage was a short story that actually some of my newsletter readers will have seen, uh, though I've revised it a little bit. Um, but it was something that I had circulated earlier. Um, and I just really liked it and thought um, it deserved a, a wider audience. And a, um, it just became a, a good title for the book. So do any of the stories tie into your previous books or your upcoming books? The very last story in the collection actually is the prelude to At the End of the World. So that story literally leaves off right where At the End of the World begins. Uh, oh, good. There's a, okay. there's a character viewpoint shift, and you, you can drop that story and pick up the book, and you just pick up the thread right there. Good. So that's a great way to tie everything together uh, with people. H how's that been going? Uh, are people enjoying the short stories? Uh, I think so. It's only been out a week now. Um, okay. Came out last week. Um, but I see there are downloads. There, are, uh, it's ebook only. There, there are downloads and uh, across at least a couple of different stores. It's available in all the stores: uh, Apple, Kobo, Barnes and Noble, uh, all of them, Amazon. Okay. That is because personally, I love short stories. I've got tons of short story books and my favorite seems to be like older fifties, sixties era sci-fi. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why I glommed onto that. Um, but I, I read, in fact, I just got, uh, where is it right here? The, the legends over mm. the weekend book three, uh, with Jordan and Terry Pratchett short stories. So, I personally love short stories, but I know a lot of people say, oh, short stories don't do well. So I'm just curious. Hopefully that'll help you with your past books and your future books. That'd be great. Yeah, I mean, I, I do it just because the same reason I, I like short stories. Um, in fact, kind of during COVID, um, reading fiction has been challenging for me. I, I just can't seem to focus on it um, very well. And so I've struggled getting through longer books. but um, between poetry and uh, nonfiction and short stories, uh, I've, I've succeeded in, in continuing to read those. So, um, and plus, as a writer, they're great because you don't get stuck on a long time uh, right. trying to finish a project, right? You, you, you right. get a shiny right. new idea and you can follow it up fairly quickly. So, Right. Agreed. Um, so you, you don't have to reveal anything, but you're writing it with a different pen name. Why did you choose a different pen name? Are the stories vastly different or did you just experiment or? It's partly an experiment, but also um, one thing I discovered is that the people who seem to really like what I write under my own name are not big fans of a traditional kind of epic fantasy. Um, and yet epic fantasy is a big successful genre, <laughs> um, one that's kind of hard to ignore. Um, and, but also those readers also aren't the type of readers that are going to flip over and really like the things that I do under my name. So, okay. um, they're kind of like, um, 
what they call the whale readers, the ones that read right. a lot in those genres, don't really stray too much from it. Um, and so I just thought it would be better to probably just do something separate. Um, I have a lot of ideas for, for epic fantasy, and there's some tropes and things I'd like to challenge a little bit um, in subtle ways. And so I felt like that was something I wanted to do. Um, I still wanted to write those stories, but I just sort of felt like it didn't fit to my name. The, the, got it. Okay. And under that pen name, you're writing some stuff with Vela, which I know I have a lot of author friends who are doing things with that. And I've, I've heard ups, downs, good and bad. Uh, you seem to, it's been a little of a struggle for you. Not, not a, like it's, it's not, well, it's partly a struggle to get a lot of um, episodes written. <laughs> and I also found that for some reason, my natural length for the episodes actually went longer than my natural length for short stories goes. Um, hmm. In order to be able to really tell a mini story that has a beginning, mini, mi middle and end, and then, you know, leave enough hanging for the next episode, uh, it just took, seemed to take more words. So I, my Vela episodes are about 4,500 words long. 5,000 is the max. And I can't seem to write shorter than that. <laughs> so uh, it's been, you know, I've got five episodes now done there and the sixth one will be ready soon. So, you know, it's, it took a while to get that much written and out. So a bit of a struggle just for that. Um, also to learn to write in a serial style, um, you know, what, what kind of a cliffhanger to leave what kind of cliffhanger doesn't really work, you know, those kinds of things. Right. And so that was, it's an interesting challenge and I, I enjoy that process, but it is, um, it is work. And then there's the marketing side. So one of the things um, is that Amazon has not yet done anything significant in terms of marketing Vela to readers. They're, right. they're, it, if you have the iOS app, it'll show up in it, um, but they don't really push it. And, um, you know, if you're on Android, you get nothing uh, in the app. You, you, if you visit the store on the web, you'll see, uh, you'll see it there. Um, so neither of those things are really pushing a lot of readers towards Vela at all. And then um, the other thing they did that's I think a bit of a struggle is that they allow, at least currently, they allow every reader to read three episodes of an unlimited number of stories for free. And so right. I've seen on I've seen on Facebook and other places where writers are saying, you know, readers are just story hopping. They, they read three episodes and they move on. They don't really feel a need to push on to that fourth episode <laughs> because yeah, there's which, another new one sitting out there somewhere that they can just, you know, which kind of tells you that the readers who are currently consuming it are not really invested in the stories so much as right. they're just passing time by reading. And as long as they can do it for free, that's great. <laughs> it, it's it's I, probably the same mentality a lot of my kids have that they don't want to buy a whole album of music they just want to buy an individual song they like right uh, and it's kind of killed that uh, the whole mm -hmm. the whole album thing you know this hopefully won't kill for them reading a whole book you know short stories a couple episodes eh, i'm good you know that but i i wonder if a lot of them if you had okay this is 20 episodes in my serial that's it it's done i wonder if they would continue because they also have that binge mindset oh here's the complete everything yeah know? i i wonder about that too although from the people that i have seen who have completed series you know 15 20 episodes up and the series is complete they're not seeing a much difference in behavior at this point so um yeah i don't know i think at some point Amazon needs to just cap that somehow, you know, it's like you can get five, you can read five different stories and they get the first three episodes free or something right, like that. Right, just some right. sort of limitation there would, I think, 
change people to say, okay, well now I need to figure out which one I actually want to read all the way through. Yeah. I mean, this is the same company that had the audio book thing where you could return an audio book mm-hmm. pretty much at any time and get another one. <laughs> so yep. not necessarily saying they're always making the best choices for writers. Right. Well, the other thing though, is this isn't helping them generate any income either. Right. right. <laughs> so I think that's the one difference that might help in this situation is that if they want this to be successful and pay for itself, at least, um, they, they need to do something different, but, but anyway, like I said, it's, it's just kind of an experiment. And I thought I would try that under the other name and just see how that went. And and it went actually reasonably well at first, the first few weeks it was out there, it was in the top 20, uh, of, uh, whatever category it was, uh, tags i was looking at you know we talked about tags last time right and um vela is really all about the tags so that's cool see see there you go i (laughs) I you called it (laughs) yeah there you go (laughs) so um how are things going with uh end of the world since you're you know we're always working on something new uh i know (laughs) traditionally a lot of times oh that book's been out a month it's dead we're done with it but indies sometimes find that things get better as time goes on. How are things with that? That's true. And I have found that to be the case. Um, in fact, July, which is the most recent month I actually had data for, July was the best month that's ever had. Um, nice. So it, things dropped off a little bit in April, not April, in May and June. And then um, really just all of a sudden picked up in, in July. And I'm not sure quite what to attribute it uh, that too, but um, I because I did run a I ran a promotion on the ebook on Fourth of July. I, I made it I forget a dollar ninety nine or two ninety nine something like that, and I ran a BookBub ad, and I didn't sell a single ebook that weekend. <laughs> Not good. But the rest of the month, like I said, I sold more than any other month, and I, I, there's a couple of theories I have about that. So one was, I think we talked last time about BookBub sending me the email saying, your campaign's not working very well. You haven't sold any, any eBooks. And it was true, but I had sold, um, I had in, in that promotion, I had included links to, um, to traditional indie stores, uh, IndieBound and, and, uh, bookshop.org. And people were clicking on those links and, and uh, later I discovered that, I, yeah, I got some sales through that. So it wasn't like um, it was ineffective at all. And on this 4th of July sale, I think some of what happened is that people use BookBub in different ways. And one of the ways that I know I use it is I don't, I rarely actually buy any of the eBooks in the emails that I get from them. I write them down. I put them on my list for things that I want to read in the future. Right. And then when I go to read that book, when I get to that point, I'm like, I don't you know, remember where I heard about it. I just go and get it through whatever channel I prefer to get it from. And I, I wonder if some of that wasn't maybe that's the way people use it. I mean, they talk about they have 25 million readers, but I wonder, you know, if maybe one or two million of them use it like I do. Um, right. And they'll never or, see that data. Or I'd love to see data from past 4th of July weekends. Do people <laughs> just maybe not read and buy a lot of books? True. You know? uh, Memorial Day, Labor Day, maybe they do. Maybe 4th of July, they don't. I, I really don't know. Yeah, I haven't uh, done been able to like do a sale each weekend to kind of test that. Maybe next year I can... <laughs> Uh, so have you found with your fantasy that like when a new movie or tv show comes out that's fantasy based do you find that you get an increase in sales just naturally or not really any correlation i haven't seen any kind of correlation because i'm trying to think when the kind of the last real fantasy thing came out yeah. Um, well, I, I know Witcher came out, but then End of the World is, or uh, Wheel of Time is coming out. Right. Uh, 
soon. Yeah, again, yeah, Wheel of Time and uh, and then Dune is coming out too. Dune, yeah. Which, even though it's sci-fi, actually has a pretty strong fantasy vibe to it. Um, right. I, I don't know. Um, and they're so so different. I mean, you know, Wheel of Time is, is very much that epic fantasy. Um, right. So I don't know how that necessarily would work for a book like um, At the End of the World. Um, the other thing that happened is um, book clubs picked up at the end of the world, um, and nice. which is nice. Uh, and one of the things that I have offered to do, and I know some other authors do this too, is I will um, do a Q&A session after the book club has read the book and if they have questions and things of that nature. And I, I did that for a, a few different ones. And I really un- enjoy that. that I think that's one of the better ways to get out and meet your readers um, is to kind of do a virtual Q and a session with people who have just read it and they have questions. (laughs) Yeah, that's great. So uh, they all read your book and uh, contact you. That's pretty cool. I mean, you weren't pushing that for anything. I wasn't, I mean, I kind of do now. I I mentioned a a couple of times (laughs) on Twitter that, Hey, if you in a book club, you know, uh, I'll come talk to you. <laughs> so where was the book club located? Uh, well, one was, it, they're all virtual. Um, the ones that I've done. So they're, so you've done more than one. Uh, yeah, I did a couple of them. Yeah, I did two, two of them and yeah, they're all virtual. And so people, um, there was one other, the reason I get confused because there was one other I heard about, but they didn't, they didn't invite me on to to talk about it. So but I've done a couple where, yeah, I've gone on and I've answered questions um, about nice. it. And uh, it, it's interesting to see what people's questions are and, um, you know, see their reactions to the book. And, and that was good. And, and one of the big things that came out of it, and I will also say that my sister is a big pusher of this, <laughs> is that they have convinced me that I need to do a sequel. <laughs> There you go. Um, I had not planned to do one because I couldn't actually figure out how to do it based on the way I left it. uh, The way I left it, uh, no spoilers, but I just, there was really only a couple of characters I could figure out how to pick up and and move forward with. And I thought, well, that's okay. But then I'm doing these book club things and people are like, well, but I love this character and I love that character and I want more of this. And I'm like, well, so I did find a way to bring everybody back together. So <laughs> cool, got the band back together. Yeah. Man. <laughs> so, so I have started making some notes and things on how that's going to work out. And once I'm done with the first a book of the arcane depository series, then I will jump back in and do the sequel to at the end of the world. Wow. So you got a lot going on. I uh, do a couple different books and Vela and everything. Um, so, and, along with book clubs and <laughs> some of your best uh, months. Well, hopefully you'll get the data for August and it's just as good or better than July. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, oh, and the other thing th- that I, did, and I would recommend this for anybody, especially any independent author that really kind of feels like you're missing out on seeing your book on a bookshelf. Contact at least one bookstore and find a reason to convince them <laughs> to put your book in there and then go see it. It just, you know, it, it just kind of satis- scratches that itch, right? Right. <laughs> so, yeah. I, and I, I, I think I talked to you about the bookstore project a little bit that I'm trying to get going yes, yes. Uh, to get some books and not, not to earn money necessarily, but to say, Hey, look, I've got my book in these bookstores. Yeah. yeah. I, I have to say it's uh, it's really good. So yeah, there was one uh, because part of at the end of the world takes place in New Hampshire and there's a character from New Hampshire. Um, I convinced a New Hampshire bookstore to buy a couple of copies and they put it on the shelf and, um, I went in and I signed them and, um, I know at least one of them sold. So it was nice. Good. Um, yeah, but it was good just to go in and see it there and, 
they even took a picture of it and put it on Instagram or Twitter. I can't remember which, but you know, and it was like, okay, this is great. Um, like I said, it just scratches that itch and you can feel like you're a real writer. Yes, I agree. I love that. Uh, and you can mark it down, you know? Yeah. And you can get me in some bookstores, select bookstores. <laughs> right. You can do more if you want to put the effort into it. But again, it's not really, it's more of a discoverability thing. Um, the, and you have to look at it that way. You can't look at it as an investment in sales. It's not going to work. Right. Right. Yeah. It, it's, it, they go in usually looking for a certain book or two. Uh, I did find so. um, that some readers had asked their local bookstores uh, about the title and um, obviously they can order it and, you know, it's print on demand, they get it. Uh, but there were a couple who actually picked up the Ingram catalog <laughs> and looked it up. And I did actually pay to put it in there. <laughs> nice. And I thought, oh, so they weren't going to order it if they didn't see it in the catalog? That seems strange to me because, you know, you just, just order it. But um, uh, for some reason, for that bookstore, it just legitimized it in, in a way that otherwise <laughs> it wouldn't have been, I guess. I don't know. I, I You can't explain book selling. <laughs> Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, that's a good tip to pass along. It might be worth the time if you're if you got a lot of fans on your newsletter, tell them to go to the bookstores and at this month because that's when you'll be in the catalog. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or the um, I think it's seasonal actually. It's quarterly or something like that. So you're there quarterly. for a while. Yeah. But um, and I saw somebody on Facebook asking if it was worth doing, and I related this, but. I, you know, I don't know if it's really worth doing. I mean, it's just, like I said, it's uh, it's a discoverability investment if you want to try it at that. Um, the same as, you know, making your books available in libraries. Right, right, right. And that's another thing. Uh, my son wrote a book when he was 16, 17, and the local library uh, put his book in it. He gave a talk there. Mm -hmm. I haven't been able to do a talk and get anything in the library yet. So I'm like, well, you know, what'd you do other than being a cute kid at the time? Right. So whatever. Okay. Well, Kevin, um, we're, we're going to uh, have another episode here of you reading a chapter. Uh, what are you reading from? So I'm reading from the new book uh, of short stories. Um, and I was Perfect. going to read, I think the, um, the title story, I don't know if you want me to read the whole story or just to a natural break. It's totally up to you. Uh, whatever feels right and comfortable for you. Is okay. Perfect. I'll probably just go to a natural break and I may actually start. One of the things I did with this collection, um, is I matched a poem with each story. Um, because again, oh, I wanted nice. to kind of give people a sense of who I was as a writer and, um, I do write a lot of poetry. I've won short collection out, um, and working on more. And so each poem is thematically or somehow related to the story that follows. So, okay. um, so if you don't mind, I would start with the poem and then I'll start the story and, and just read to a natural break. Perfect. Perfect. Well, I'm going to shut off cameras and, and mute myself. So we're not uh, interfering. And I appreciate you taking some time uh, to get on the podcast again, give us an update on what's going on. Uh, I think it's important for other writers to hear what writers are doing uh, after their first book or two. So that's great that you're still doing it. I've had a couple after I've talked to them that said, yeah, I'm not writing anymore. Mm. And I think that's kind of sad. So it's great. To I, hear from I agree. You that is kind of sad. Um, you know, yeah. I, I, I you can't maybe always make a living at it, but you know, uh, if it's something that you felt driven to do once, I kind of wonder why you wouldn't feel driven to do it twice, but that's just me. Uh, I know Agreed. a lot of people have their own reasons for writing and yeah, not, writing. there's a whole lot of reasons. Yeah. Right. All right. So uh, I appreciate you being on the podcast and we're going to get a chapter. What, what are we, what are you reading? So I'm reading uh, a poem called I carried magic that was published in, um, star line um last summer and then i'll read the short story that is the title story from the enduring mage perfect all right great and i'll be here at the end thank okay. you
Thank you for listening to Discovered Wordsmiths. Come back next week and listen to another author discuss the road they've traveled and maybe sometime in the near future, it might be you.